They said, Blue Zoo TV, come to the Oregon coast. They said, the views are spectacular. They even filmed the movie, The Goonies Here. They said, let's go diving. The water is a bit murky, a bit rough, and oh yeah, 51 degrees. They said, you'll have a blast. So we did. This is Blue Zoo TV, presented by Akari, featuring Fluval. We are on the west coast in Oregon with our boys from Coldwater Marine, Stu and Josh. We're going collecting. When Josh and Stu from Coldwater Marine contacted me about shooting Blue Zoo TV presented by Hikari featuring Fluval, I told them that I wanted the whole experience. Don't hold anything back. So they picked me up at 3.45 in the morning, which I think they took it a little too seriously what I was trying to talk to them about. So at 3.45 in the morning they picked us up and we headed to the coast of Oregon. This is Josh. It's Stu. Guys? Hello. Hey, hey. Thanks, uh, thanks first of all for waking me up at quarter to four. I appreciated that. <laughs> no problem. I want to talk a little bit about what cold water marine is because we did some cold water marine diving, so I guess I know where the name came from. How long have you guys been around? What really is cold water marine and why the Oregon Shore? Well, um, both Josh and I kind of uh, grew up. Um, with a close association to the Oregon coast, um, always going out tide pooling, collecting things for ourselves as kids. Um, I remember going as, as a kid with my dad going and getting bucketfuls of crabs and showing it to him and he'd tell me to go dump them back in the ocean. So um, I kind of always wanted to do it myself and keep a home cold water aquarium but never really was able to um, until later in life and um, made my way to getting my own uh, cold water tank started refurbishing them, sold one off to, uh, to a local fish store, and Josh ended up being the guy who bought it, of all things. So left a note inside of the tank to uh, contact me if you want to go tide pooling. And uh, Josh got a hold of me, and we kind of made a few trips out. And uh, we talked, and he mentioned if, uh, you know, have you ever thought about doing this for, you know, selling these, and is there anybody else interested in it? And uh, we just kind of hashed out, it took about, a year and a half of figuring out what to do for permitting and once we worked with Department of Wildlife and got our permitting in line we uh, struck out for cold water marine aquatics and uh, started collecting and offering it to the public for uh, home temporary aquarium. So you are when you talk about permits you are permitted to take things out of the ocean? Yeah yeah we got licensed uh, licensed and permitted as uh, commercial fishermen and wholesale fish dealers with a, a specialized permit for intertidal harvest so um, we worked closely with Department of Wildlife to figure out um, what animals we'd be taking, what locations, so that they don't have a high impact on the environment. And we have kind of self, uh, uh, self-imposed self restrictions as far as how we collect. So we only really take animals to order. We generally type uh, try to take animals that do well in aquarium, and we, we experimented quite a bit with that early on, keeping them ourselves to see how well they would do before offering just a plethora of animals to the public. So um, we did, uh, did quite a bit of research in keeping uh, the animals ahead of time and a long, long process with Department of Wildlife to make sure everything was on par and we're doing it right. Josh, what are we, what are we trying to get done today? Like, what is the angle? What are you going to do? What, when you go into the water, what are the first couple of things you're looking for? Sure. So it, it all depends on, obviously, what the client wants. So if we're dealing with a public aquarium, like right now, we're going to be taking some uh, native sea anemones, and um, based off of what they order, we'll usually just take what they've you know wanted to acquire. So if it's ten anemones, we'll go down, we'll take our ten anemones, and maybe a couple extra, um, just a package for uh, loss and shipping. Um, and uh, usually, we try to have as low or little impact as possible. So we're not going down and just taking as many as we can. We um, only hold in house mainly items that we've actually imported in. A lot of our native items that we sell on the site are either bred in captivity, propagated in captivity, or it's something that we don't find very often. So we don't have to over harvest 
our native water. So really our collection is driven by the clientele in a way. So take us through your typical diet like we're doing today. You're, you're waiting for low tide to go out, which just probably makes it a little easier that you guys can go out a little further. You're free diving, what happens? Yeah, so we, we always look at the, um, the best low tides that situate in the, in the, the best time. So we like to go on weekends. Um, sometimes we'll go night diving and stuff and we'll go night tide pooling, but like today, um, we got a super early start like you mentioned. Um, and that was so that we could get out of Portland and be to the beach by about sunrise um, and the low tide was shortly after that. So we wanted to get out there, um, get it at the maximum bottom for the, for the low tide so that we could get out to some of the structures uh, that we were diving and uh, make sure that we could see some of the cool things, show you guys a good time out here and uh, harvest some of the animals that we were looking for. So. Um, yeah, good low tides that associate with good weather. Um, it's okay. Uh, it's pretty <laughs> it's average Oregon, okay. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's not bad. So that's what we're looking for when we go out and then... Um, we usually tie in a dive too. So yeah. usually what will happen is it, it'll either be early morning, late night. We'll do the, the low tide collection, um, snorkeling, stuff like that, intertidal collection. And then we'll try to tie in a dive session along with that subtitle. Uh, that way we actually get basically two collection trips out of one trip. Is there almost no place bad to go off the Oregon shore for what you guys do? There's some bad spots. Yeah, <laughs> Oregon is I mean, as far as, we, we, we generally try to go to areas that we've, that we've previously scouted. We did a lot of that in the early setup before we got uh, the business going. Um, but we try to go to areas that we know, um, that we know are accessible, that we know aren't extremely dangerous. It was trial um, and error. And yeah. also trying to find locations that we can keep coming back to to find certain animals specific to that location. That way we're not ever having to look for them in another area. So we have a place where we collect pipe fish, we have a place where we collect certain anemones, um, and usually there'll be one or two locations so we don't have to hit the same spot twice. And like I said, a lot of the animals we breed and propagate in captivity. So we're not always going back to those same locations, but it is nice that we've uh, done the research to be able to go to a certain area and not have to think twice about whether or not we're going to acquire the animals we're looking for. As far as the permit, because people will ask, you are permitted to dive and you are probably able to give them certain locations that you are able to go to. Yeah, exactly. When, um, when we applied for the permit, um, we gave um, give Department of Wildlife a list of locations that we would like to collect in and they vetted those and told us you can collect in this one, this one, this one, can't collect in this one, this one, this one, and they had their reasons, either be it um, you know, uh, high recreational activity or um, it's too close to a marine preserve. So we tried to find places that were out of the way but still accessible to us. Off the beaten so. path where people aren't so likely to have to question or see what we're doing. And um, you know, it's kind of, uh, it's not that it's hidden, but you know, it kind of keeps us safe too because a lot of the areas that we do collect in there's not heavy boat traffic there isn't people fishing everywhere and you know it's just uh you know it's it, i think it was more for impact too you know the areas that they wanted us to collect are places where anybody for the most part could go with a shellfish permit and collect crab or anything like that for their own personal use i hope you enjoyed a behind the scenes look at collecting off the Oregon coast with the guys at Coldwater Marine Aquatics. This is Blue Zoo TV presented by Akari featuring Fluval. Blue Zoo TV is presented by Hikari, making species specific diets long before it was fashionable because at Hikari we know it matters. And featuring Fluval, discover life below water with Fluval. Blue Zoo is proudly partnered with Carib Sea, bringing science to life. Nature protected, nature perfected with Carib C. To email the show, go to bluezootv.com and follow us on Twitter at bluezootv.